All right, what's up everybody? It's Coach Josh, man. Welcome to my Facebook Live. Come on in. I'm going to give you guys some time uh, to join me in today's discussion. I just got off the phone with a, with a client as far as a, a coaching session, and I was inspired by our talk to talk about where you're holding your ideas. So if you're watching this on live, Facebook Live, feel free to do me a big favor. Share this broadcast with as many people as you can. Feel free to comment. Let me know what you're getting from this. Let me know what you're going to finish for the Lord this year, this month, this week, what you're going to finish by the night. And I would love to see your comments. Feel free um, to, to engage and share and all that good stuff. But for those who are watching on YouTube, I want to say thank you guys so much for watching online. The Unplugger community on YouTube, I want to say thank you. If you're watching this, you don't even know about um, the Unplugger community, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell. And uh, make sure you join us. Um, I'll be posting things periodically in our community tab, so feel free to engage there. And uh, uh, feel free to share. But if there's something um, that you see in our links down below that you want to uh, uh, engage with, feel free to look down below and comment. I would love to hear what you're going to finish today, this week, this month, this year for God. So feel free to subscribe and join us. But for those who's listening on Google Play, Apple Podcasts, and SoundCloud, I want to say thank you guys so much for listening. Let's get right into it. Um, today, we're going to be talking about where are you holding your ideas? I'm going to give you um, um, a couple of points, starting with the problem. The problem I see when it comes to ideas is that people are holding their ideas improperly. They're holding their ideas inside too long. So many people are holding their ideas improperly. They're holding them in too long. The reason why many of us are not flourishing and successful in the way, in the realm that we're supposed to is because we're holding in what God wants us to birth out. God never intended for your ideas to remain ideas. He intended for your ideas to become items, items by which people can use, items by which you can pull you out of your state of poverty or state of confusion. He wants your ideas to turn into an item where people can use. The sad thing is so many people are holding their God-given ideas inside of them. My question to you is, where are you holding your ideas? Right now, I, I, I am motivated, inspired by, by, the, by the idea of, of finishing. The enemy doesn't want you to feel the feelings of finish. He understands that when a person finishes their God assignment, wherever stage they're on, there's gonna be a sense of fulfillment that's going to birth inside of them, that's going to fo focus them and push them deeper and deeper into finishing for God. The devil doesn't want you to flourish because the more that you flourish in your God idea, the more you're going to set into liberty other people from their captivity. That's why we got to do what we have to do to make sure that we are focused, fixed and founded on what God wants us to do and to finish inspired by number one that we're going to be judged by the father number two to ensure that people receive jubilance and number three to ensure that we receive joy knowing that we're doing something that's not only advancing individuals but we're advancing the kingdom of God my question to you again where are you holding your ideas Right now, my ideas was birthed yesterday. Right now, this table is holding my book, The Purpose of Freedom, my game memory muscle, my game dating prep. Right now, this table is holding it. Amazon is holding my books right now. My uh, ezygames.com is holding my games. It, there are places holding my ideas, but imagine what would happen in my life if I kept my ideas in. Right now, I can, I can flourish, I can grow, I can inspire others because of something that was finished. I was teary eye when I opened my card games in my book for the first time because I remember the day I received the idea and there's something unique that happens when you can hold your item hold it in your hand holding your idea knowing that God can use God cannot use an idea here he can only use the idea here he can't use it if it's lodged with between your heart and mind but nobody can do nothing with that idea that's why you got to ask yourself, what am I doing today to ensure that God can use? God cannot use anything in empty hands. You got to give him something to use. Whatever you have, birth it out of you so that he can use it. So many people right now are whining and complaining and moping and, and doping and doing all these different things, wondering why their life is where it is. Your life is where it is today because possibly you're holding your God-given idea inside too long. I have four things on why people hold their ideas too long. Number one, insecurities. So many people feel like, man, who am I? They're too insecure to be inspired. They're too insecure uh, to be intentional. They're too insecure about who they are, how they look. 
and it, that lures them to cause their God ideal to remain dormant or that insecurity will cause them to fulfill another idea, a carnal idea, not a Christ centered idea, but a carnal idea of birthing it to feel secure again. Listen, if you want to feel secure, you got to move out of your insecurities. Only Christ can secure the areas where you feel insecure. And that's why you got to say it doesn't matter what people got to say or what people think. You got to be about your father's business. Jesus didn't care about where Mary and Joseph was looking for him. He said, didn't you not know that I have to be about my father's business? And that was at 12. But we got to do what it takes. Say, God, I don't care what I look like. I don't care if I'm in a carpenter's son's family. It doesn't matter where I am in poverty or in prosperity or whatever in life. I'm not going to allow my insecurities to keep me from fulfilling what I'm supposed to fulfill. Listen, we all have insecurities and you're going to navigate through life and you're going to feel insecure at times. You're going to feel inadequate. You're going to feel like you're incapable. That's the fruit of following God. No matter where you go, you're going to feel insecure in your own flesh. But when you are focused on God and you're holding his hand, him, no, no, you knowing who you are in him will cause you to feel secure. Listen, I'm going to get married, man. I'm going to have kids. I'm going to have to purchase a building one day. I'm going to have to do great things for God. And I'm going to feel insecure. But my security shouldn't be on how I feel secure in of myself. My security should be in who I am in Christ. The number one reason why people are not set free, the reason why people are stuck in soul ties and strongholds is because they don't have a clear understanding of who they are in Christ or who they could be in him. The people who are not saved, the enemy is going to make sure they never find out who they could be in Christ. And those who are in Christ, his objective is to make sure you never fulfill or feel or sense what it means to be in him. You're going to feel insecure, but that doesn't mean you get your ideas out. Man, people was talking about why are you doing card games? You ain't going to do no app. I'm obedient. I'm going to do what he tells me to do. And when you get these card games in your hand and when you see, you will see such intelligence in them. Not my intelligence. You will see that this did not, man did not create this. Coach did not create this. This must come from God. If you want to change the world, you got to be innovative in the intimacy, intimate presence of God. So that when people see your idea, they know man did not create this. They know man couldn't do this without a help from God. That's why you got to let your insecurities go and say, God, I'm going to do this for you because I know I'm going to see you eye to eye one day and I'm going to be held accountable. I know for a fact that if I get this done, this may liberate thousands, if not millions of people. And if I do this, I know I will have a sense of joy knowing that I did what my father told me to do. Without that, complete understanding, you're insecure. You ain't going to get your ideas out of your mind. Listen, man, some of you guys have been sitting on your ideas for years, for years, when my mind was renewed in the fact that it doesn't matter, see your focus on producing ideas shouldn't be about selfish intent. It can't be about what you want. When I realize that everything that I do must be for the glory of God, then that's when my mind was liberated from, from the insecure feelings that I once felt. It was liberated because now I know it's not about me. It's not about who it is. It's about being obedient to the only one that matters. He matters most. And when we know that, we will say, God, whatever you want me to do, no matter how ugly you may feel, no matter how inadequate you may feel, you're going to be about your father's business because you know in him, is where your worth is. Number two, fear. So many people are just afraid. God, if I go and fail, so what if you fail? I'd rather fail doing what God told me to do than to not, than to be successful in an area where he didn't tell me. But I'm telling you right now, you can't fail when you are faithful to God. Faithfulness in God, you won't fail. That's why I love the story when, when um, the disciples was in the boat and they was fishing. It was a nice cool day. It wasn't hot like it is in Charlotte, man. It was hot today. But they was in the boat and, 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 and the, uh, Peter had his shirt off and they was toiling all night. And, and Jesus told them to cast their nets in. And, and, and Peter was like, but Jesus, man, Jesus, man, we've been working all night, though, bro. Like, like, what you mean cast another net out? He said, no, cast a net. And in them being obedient to God, they had enough fish to take care of them for a long period of time. Wherever God tell you to cast your net, you be faithful and you cast it. It doesn't matter if you've been toiling all night. It doesn't matter if what kind of fear you feel. Do not allow fear to paralyze you from casting your net to feel the nets being full to the point of breaking. But so many people allow their fears to paralyze them, keeping them 
from flourishing, keeping them from fulfillment, man. The enemy doesn't want you to feel the feelings of finish, man. Yo, when I took this book out of the box, it felt like a pair of J's. It felt like Jordans. It felt like something like this is this is mine. This is this was once an idea. And then when I got these games and I and I started looking at them, I said, yo. There was many a nights when I was afraid and I didn't want to do it, but I had to get it done because anytime you hold an idea too long, that idea could expire. Everything has a shelf life, ladies and gentlemen. Do not allow fears to cause your youth and your time to be mismanaged and you have nothing to show for your life. When you die, do you have anything to show for you? Like, listen, what, 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 what value are you going to have dead? Like, when you die, is anybody going to say, she left a legacy. He left a legacy. When I die, they won't be able to keep my name out of their mouth. When I die at 95 and 96, my name will live long because my, my fulfillment, what I finish will live long. Listen, the finish comes before flourishing in the, def, in the dictionary. You can't, fit, you can't flourish without finishing. You can't feel fulfillment without finishing. You got to finish. Finish the work that he has called you to do. And the enemy knows that if you feel the feelings of finish, you will be addicted to the feeling to finish and you will be about your father's business because you know that when you get that email from that young girl 16 thinking about suicide you get that email from that young boy who's 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 contemplating uh, uh, who's fighting depression and when you get those emails from from the and you feel the fruit from your obedience there's nothing like feeding off the fruit of your faithfulness God is tired of you feeding off the fruit of his faithfulness. He is wanting you to get into a place where you feed off the fruit of your own. There's nothing. He said, Jesus said, yeah, I have food you know not of. When he was talking to the woman at the well, the disciples was kind of perplexed. He was like, yo, Jesus, man, yo, you was, you, you a teacher. You with a woman? But, but besides that, Jesus, I ain't trying to try you right now. But, but, but Jesus, are you hungry? Have you eaten? Jesus said, man, I got food you know not of. For my food is to do the will of my father. Ooh, if all you eat is in the flesh, you will die of spiritual starvation. You got to eat off the, off the will of God. That's what keeps me going. That's what's going to keep you from quitting. That's what's going to keep you from, from giving up because you're going to be like, I have to eat off the will of God to sustain myself. And so many people are allowing fear to keep them from finishing. Finish comes before flourishing, no matter what dictionary you look in. And you got to finish the work of God. Number three, only I can even read my writing. Uh, anyway, <laughs> insecurities, fears, it's an F word, I can't remember. Distractions, oh, feelings, 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 feelings. Number three, feelings. Man, what are feelings, yo? Feelings are not factual. Feelings are just indicators of a present mood. So many people allow offense, uh, 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 pride. They allow all these feelings to keep them from finishing. My last point, which is distractions, goes with feelings. The enemy knows all I got to do to get you off and to drift you off your path of destiny is to distract you. I'm going to research you. I'm going to study you. I'm going to find out where you're high and low with God. And I'm going to bring things at the right time, <clears throat> at the most opportune time to get you distracted. And when you're distracted just for a brief moment and you taste the delicacies of that distraction, then you may be, just, you may be in cycles of destruction for a period of time. He understands the beauty of youth, the beauty of time. All he has to do is distract you for a week. Man, I heard Eric Thomas say that if you don't do what you're supposed to do at a certain time, it could push your dream back five or six months. How many of us are pushing back the plans of God, pushing back the promises per se to your finished work? How many of us are pushing that six, seven, eight, nine, ten months down the line? I don't got time to be 60 talking about, I guess I'll start with my first book. No, and if you're 60 now, cool, you got life, get to it. But if you young, man, you ain't going to be young all the days of your life. Listen, I'm 32 years old. I'm just cooking with grease now. I don't got time. I have goals. I have things I got to get done. I want to, listen, I want to be able to experience things in his life. But you can't experience things in life with just an idea remaining an idea. An idea must be turned into an item in order for you to be successful. Where are you insecure? Where are you afraid? What kind of feelings are coming to the surface due to distractions? distracting you from finishing your assignment. People who are successful today are successful because of one word, discipline. Discipline, discipline, discipline. The root word, the root word of disciple is discipline. 
God is looking for disciplined people. Listen, the state of our world is not because of the gospel. It's the gospel, yes, but it's the second part of the gospel. The gospel is supposed to set people free. And then after the gospel has done its work, we are supposed to make disciples. The reason why our country is where it is today and our world is where it is today and our communities are where they are today is because of a lack of discipleship. A lack of discipleship means a lack of discipline. A lack of discipline means a lack of understanding of the divine. When you don't understand the divine and his teachings, you won't be disciplined. If you're not disciplined, the lack thereof is proof you're not a disciple. That's why you got to say, you know what? I'm going to make sure I anchor myself in the things of God so that I can be a about my father's business because Jesus said I got more done in three years than the whole world got done it together in thousands of years and many of us we got that same spirit the same spirit that Christ had the same spirit that raised from the dead we have him in us we have him in us we're supposed to do exploits but so many of us are not flourishing we're not shining bright because we're insecure afraid and not about our father's business listen this video is meant to be a warning you better be about it because death ain't the number one thing that you should be scared of. It should be your father. It should be the judgment. Knowing that you had all this time, all this life, all these opportunities to be about it. And you go to God with a basket empty. Listen, when I get to heaven, I might not be able to take anything from down here. But I want to get to heaven and God saying, I'll judge you when the world is over because your ideas are still working. I want God to be like, we can't even calculate your, the fruit of your life because what you left down here in the world is still working for you. So God is saying, I can't even finish judging you. I'm not saying that's biblical, but I'm giving a picture that he said, I can't even finish judging you because your work is still working. Listen. I want God to be able to say, son, I'm just going to let you look and see what your work is still doing out here. Your idea in your mind is a seed. But when it becomes an item, it bursts inspiration that can part a seed in somebody else's mind and start the cycle. When I finish my work, me finishing this book, my other book, Dating Prep, that'll be out, that'll be here in the mail, in my memory muscle, in my dating prep game. Listen, it's going to inspire generations to come. And I'm working on two more games. I got a skeleton for three more books. It doesn't stop. Because I know greater is he that's in me and greater are the ideas that's in me because I'm in him. And if I be about my father's business, what could my life be? That's the same for you. Listen, man, no excuses. I got a full time job, a full time relationship, a full time ministry, full time family commitments. I got a bunch of emails that I answer. You make time for what you make time for. Listen, so many of y'all making excuses. No, make time. Stop making excuses and make time. Remove things that are in the way that's moving you away from your marker. Move it out the way so you can get things done. The enemy doesn't want you to feel the feelings of finish. You can't flourish without finishing. Life is about fulfillment. Those are my quick points there. Now let's talk about seven things real quick. Seven things and I'm out your way. I didn't have no intention of doing this. <clears throat> I wrote these notes in a matter of minutes. Just got off the phone call and I'm getting it right to you. That's the same thing. Not all ideas are given um, 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 for, for the fulfillment of it being weeks or months or years from now. Sometimes God to say do it and you got to be obedient. Obedience is an art. Obedience is an art form. That's why God doesn't give you big things first. He gives you small things first. The reason why we don't obey God in small things is because we look at the small things as they don't give a big return. We don't do it because, well, man, am I really going to get something out of this? But God's saying, no, no, no. I give you little assignments to see how you obey. So that when it's time to obey in the big things, you can obey. God said, if, if, you, can't, if you can't honor the little, <clears throat> you won't be able to hold the much. God said, I'm not going to give you anything for you to hold if you're not whole yourself. Why would God give you, why would God give you a marriage to hold if you're not whole? Why would God give you children to hold? Well, you can make children without God. What I'm saying, why would God give you anything in life if he knows you're not whole? In order to hold something, you have to be whole yourself. But so many people are leaking because they're full of holes. They, they're, they're not allowing God to patch up those areas, causing them to understand that, Father God, hide me, set me aside. Don't put me in a place that I don't belong. Make me whole. Make me prepared. So when it's time to give this item to the world that I'm whole enough to, 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 to reveal the authenticity of the person that wrote it. Let's get to some seven things. I call this from an idea to an item. 
how to turn an, how you turn an idea into an item from an idea to an item number one you must be intimate you must be intimate with God in order to take your God-given idea and turn it to an inspired divine endorsed by God item they're saying, listen, you can produce outside of God, you can produce businesses, you can produce companies, you can do so much without God. We, we're talking about God ideas. God doesn't endorse your carnal idea. God doesn't endorse your idea just because you got an idea. That's why y'all been toiling and burnt out, pursuing this idea, doing this idea. Listen, yes, you're gonna feel like giving up when you're doing a God idea, but at least you're fueled by him. When I was in the process of writing this book and doing these things, these things are very tedious for your boy. I ain't really wanna be sitting in front of a computer for hours. My eyes are still red because I've been in front of a computer for four to five and a half weeks, right? But even though I felt like, man, is it even worth it? There's a supernatural feeling that births inside of me. There's a supernatural endorsement from God that keeps me going. But if you try to fulfill an idea outside of the intimate presence of God, you're going to burn out or you're going to have yourself become identified by the thing. That's why the number one thing is to be intimate because in your intimacy, you are now reshaping your identity. Now you're identifying yourself back into God. Now you're looking at yourself as the item because there's one idea that you're holding right now. The idea of the gospel, the same idea that was in God's mind. He said, all I got to do, if, if I can get you to hold that idea, then I can get you to hold ideas externally that will change the world. That's why God told his boys, I got to go. I can't be around y'all because when I send my spirit, you will begin to hold the idea of the universe and when you hold that idea inside of you that idea will always inspire you in moments that you feel like giving up because if you can hold God's idea then God can hold your ideas and he could take that idea and multiply manifest it and give you access to places you know not of you knew not of but if you don't understand the difference between man-made ideas and God-made ideas then you're going to find yourself destroyed or you'll find yourself burnt out pursuing us. So these are seven ways, seven things you got to do to turn your God idea into an item. The difference between a God idea, like I hear you asking questions already on YouTube. Y'all was, was in the comments box, but they asking questions. Josh, what's the difference between a God idea and a man idea? God ideas catches you off guard, number one. You ain't thinking about it. You minding your own business. God hits you with it. Bam. Usually, when a God idea comes upon you, there's a river. I'm just giving you from my experience. There's a river of information. There, you grab a notebook, and next thing you know, you got three pages written. You know it's a God idea when, it's full, when, it's, when it flows and it's not forced. When you got to force it to come out of you, God doesn't, God doesn't go through force. He goes with the flow. When you feel that river, that flow of God and that idea, he'll give you the compartments of the idea. He'll get the idea will be spread out like you got a digital invisible screen in front of you moving this over here. Five points over here. Seven B's here. 18 Y's here. Don't even know if you can get 18 Y's. But you got all this scattered and you just had a moment. But I'm telling you, when you have those moments, you got to keep a notebook with you. When you have those moments, you got to stay with God. But those moments are rare in a person's life who's out of reach of God. You got to be in his presence to feel that rare moment of divine inspiration because God doesn't give ideas to people he know he can't trust them with. But when you are intimate with God, you will have the intel of God and God will give unique intelligence. Money is in the formula. If you want to be successful, find the formula of your life. Many of us don't even know the formula of our own life life everything boils down to the science kfc was successful because of 11 herbs everything is successful based upon the formula because people buy the formula and when you have a sense of intelligence in your own uniqueness god can then take that inspired by him with his intelligence in it and the world will be uh, the world will be inspired you got to find your formula and you can't find your formula without being faithful faithfully intimate with god receiving intel or making sure your identity is reshaped in him because when you know who you are in Christ you know everything all the glory belongs to him you will be able to function at a high level because you know this ain't done without me that's why I'm preaching crazy right now I don't even know what I'm saying right now every time I start talking like this and I'm flowing like this I know it ain't me it's the Holy Ghost that's why you got to make sure you honor the spirit of God and say God use me in ways I never thought of God inspire me make sure I do things and God to give you 
games. He'll give you stuff that people don't even think they can do. Books that you never do that you was even going to write. Business concepts that top Fortune 500 companies would need. You need that. God's people say it's supposed to be unique. We're supposed to be the one shining. We're supposed to be the one they coming to. That's why stop trying to be number one. Be number two. Be a Joseph. Be a Daniel. They ran the country from behind the scenes. The world is always going to be looking for people who can interpret dreams. See, the reason why God gives these people dreams because he knows I can give a cheat code to my people. And if I give a cheat code to my people, I can flourish my people that's in bondage. That's why people got mad with it because the king didn't know who Joseph was. And you got to make sure you're that person where you got that intel. You got that inspiration from God that people will hunt you, give you checks, give you big bags. Talking about, I need to be around you. That's what you need. But you can't get that without intimacy in God. Number two, you must be intact. You must be whole. Listen, God ain't, God ain't going to allow that idea to come out if you ain't whole, man. Wholeness doesn't mean perfection. Wholeness means prepared. This chair is whole. This, this table is whole. Things are whole because they're able to do with their function. You're not whole if you're not functioning. So many people are functioning. Listen, if listen, what's the, I can't, uh, uh, many of us, we don't know our function. That's why we're not flourishing. In order for you to flourish, you got to know your function. You got to know what you're supposed to do. So many of us are functioning in the wrong areas and we're wondering why we're getting more holes in our life and not fulfilling our assignment. You have to be intact. You have to be whole. You have to be prepared. You ain't going to be able to flourish in a marriage if you're not whole as a single person. You're not going to be able to flourish as a parent if you're not whole in the husbandhood and womanhood. You're not going to be able to flourish in anything if you're not whole in God. Number two, you must be intact. In order to turn your idea to an item, you have to be intimate with God so your intel will change and your influence will change. And you also have to be intact. Number three, you have to be immovable. Immovable. In other words, fully persuaded. Man, it was crazy on that, that hot summer day. Noah just finished putting the last screw into the ark. And for years, people was laughing. Man, no way it ain't rain here for decades and you're building an ark. Ah, ah, ah. Look at Noah. Noah's still building an ark. <laughs> but year after year, Noah was immovable. Noah was fully, fully persuaded in what God because your ideal is going to look foreign to others. People don't like when you pursue your God idea because your God idea becomes a mirror to them. People don't want to look at you being successful. They want you to stay at their level. That's why you can't listen to people who are on levels beneath you. Even if you're on the same level physically, do not listen to people where your mind is above listen if you can think beyond your environment you can grow out of that negative environment and so many people are allowing the insecurities of others allowing the subtle low-key self-hate of others the low-key hate of you of others to cause them not to flourish i don't care what nobody got to say about josh josh is free cuz josh josh i don't got no nobody can change my own father couldn't change my mind when i'm a teenager and what makes me think you can what makes me think anyone can when you fully persuade and movable, you are a dangerous person because you can't be swayed and you got to be fully persuaded because when that cloud came and that rain dropped <laughs> and Noah was pulling the door in the alligator was the last one in it wasn't the alligator but whatever whoever it was it could have been a, a raccoon but about time the rat, last raccoon came in that door shut and that rain dropped on those people the one who laughs last laughs best Noah went to the ark sat down in his chair heard the rain cry heard the people crying heard the rain falling and I don't think Noah laughed but I know deep down inside Noah said it was worth me obeying God you got to be immovable. <clears throat> you got to be fully persuaded. You can't let people change what God told you to do because people will talk bad against it until they see the final work. Number four, you have to be, you have to initiate. It's one, it's cool to be intimate. It's good to be intact. It's great to be fully persuaded. But what's the point of those three if you don't start? Start. Get to it. Write the vision, make it plain so when people see it, they can run with it. Where they run into? They run into help build it even bigger. 
You got to make sure that you're saying, you know, I'm going to start. Start, man. You go to God, then go to Google, and then grind. Those are my three Gs. God, Google, grind. Go at it. It's in the initiation of it that you begin to build momentum. You got to start. You got to be about it. You got to engage in it. You got to flow in it. You got to start. Because once you start, man, you will start feeling what you need to do to finish. Next, you have to be innovative. Number five, innovative. <clears throat> in order to turn a God idea into a, into a, a God endorsed item, you have to be innovative. Innovative means unique. You have to be unique. You have to be Y-O-U unique. You, unique. You got to be different. Listen, <clears throat> nobody wants stale and old. People want new and, and, and usable. You got to be innovative and there's nothing more innovative than you. When you, you're, when you yourself, you are innovative. A copy is not an innovation. An original is innovation. See, when you copy an original, you're not innovative. You're just copying somebody else's innovative, innovativeness. But when you're you, <clears throat> in God, focus, you're innovative. You're you. Then God's going to add your unique personality, your unique twist. We ain't talking about all those demonic personalities that got to get up out of you. We're talking about your personality, your twist, your wit, your cleverness, your creativity, your art form, your perspective. God uses all of that in the pot. And then when that item comes out, it's inspired through God, but it has your thumbprint too. So then when people look at it, they're going to be like, yo, I see that can go far. I got to stay me. If I preach like somebody else, I won't be innovative. If I, if I create like everybody else, I won't be innovative. I'm going to stay me and stay with God so innovation can birth. That's the same for you. When, before you get an item out there into the world, you got a man. You got to say, God, I'm going to be innovative. Next point, not in my list, but I added just now. You have to inspect. I think inspect starts with I. Yeah, inspect. You have to inspect. <clears throat> Make sure that it can't be broken. Make sure that it can't be misused. You got to inspect it. You got to make sure that it won't fall. You got to inspect your product. You got to inspect your idea. You got to make sure that I heard someone say the best way to ensure you stay in business is to create ways to put yourself out of business. You got to say, in what ways can I put myself out of business? In what ways could this thing break? And when you find the weak points of your idea, you inspect it to make sure that it's stronger and, and it lasts. So many people build stuff that doesn't have no longevity, that they build a stuff in their life that won't have a legacy. God wants to make legends, not trendy individuals. I'm a legend because I'm me. When I die, I'm going to die a legend. I'm not going to die a trend. So many people are dying trendy, but not living legendary. And you got to make a decision. So before you put your idea out there, you got to inspect it. You got to look at the laws of the land. You got to get it copywritten. You got to make sure before these things came out, they had, they was copywritten. They was protected. You got to protect it, inspect it to ensure that when it goes out there in the world, when it's detected, nobody can use it against you. You got to inspect your idea. God, show me its weak points. Show me innovation. Show me what I need to inspect to make sure this thing is strong. Number seven, you have to be intentional. You have to be intentional. You have to be intentional even when you don't feel like it. Man, it's something when you wrestle with an idea. No matter what stage is in, you're wrestling with it. There's going to be some days where you ain't going to want to do it, but you got to be intentional. When you find it the hardest to pray, pray your hardest. When you find it the hardest to work on your craft, work at it at the hardest. Because psychologically, you build another strain of muscle in your mind that says, no matter when I feel this resistance, I know I'm capable of going beyond it. You got to be intentional because you got to keep them people in the forefront. Every time I think of an idea when I'm about to bring it back and bring it out into life, I think of my father. I think about my heavenly father. My father, heavenly father, what do you want? You want this out here because of your love for me? I'm not working for your love. I'm not producing these ideas to feel love from God. I'm not out here trying to get love. No, no, I'm doing this because God, you so love me that you gave. That in that giving now, I'm inspired to give everything my only begotten, my only begotten life for you to be able to use for your glory. And you got to be intentional even when you don't feel like you got to have a why. You got to say, I'm doing this for my father. I'm doing this for the people group that's going to be the most impacted by this. And I'm doing this for myself. Yo, man, I don't want to be poor. I don't want to be out here working paycheck to paycheck. That's not where I'm at in life. But I want to be able to grow higher because, listen, Biggie got it wrong. 
own. Biggie said more problems, uh, more money, more problems. No, no, no. Biggie was off. The real thing is more money, more problems solved. The money is not the problem. It's the love of it. Love of it. When you're in love of God, he'll give you more resources and more money because he knows you will solve more problems. That's what we got to get to in a place today. Being intentional even when I don't feel like it. Last but not least, I have to avoid the irrelevant. <clears throat> avoid the irrelevant. You may be isolated. People may not be into it, but you gotta avoid the irrelevant. If it's irrelevant to your dream, if it's irrelevant to your idea, if it's irrelevant to the things of God, cut it out your life. In order to turn your idea a God idea into a God inspired endorsed item. You must be intimate. You must be intact. You must be immovable. You must initiate. You must be innovative. You must inspect. You must be intentional and you must avoid the irrelevant. I promise you if you engage with these points, success is inevitable. We're not talking about world success. We're talking about where you can be successful in the world way, but we're talking about ultimately successful in the things of God. Listen, man, get to work. What is it that God wants you to finish by, by tonight? What does God want you to finish by tomorrow? What does God want you to finish by the end of the week? What does God want you to finish by the end of the month? What does God want you to finish by the end of the year? You can't, you don't know, you won't know what to finish if you're not in fellowship with God. You won't know what to finish if you're not faithful to God. You won't know what to finish if you're not in deep love with him. When you're in love with God and you focus and you understand what he wants you to do, finishing is easy. Starting is hard. Finishing is easy. But when you start with God, the world opens up for you. I pray this message was a blessing to you guys. Um, finish, get it done. God can't do nothing with half done. It has to be done, done. In order to be, a, uh, in order to do, in order to get things done, you can't spell done without do. That, that just came out of nowhere. <laughs> you can't spell done without do. You got to do it and get it done. But for those who's watching, man, I'm, I'm excited to celebrate the releasing of my books. You can go to ezygames.com. I got a game called Memory Muscle to help those memorize scripture in a fun way. There's three ways to play this game. Uh, you use it, you quote it, and discuss it with a community or group of people. You can use it in flashcard style where you, uh, you read the scripture, Psalms 119, and you, you can memorize it for yourself. You can play it in a group. You can go online and find out how to play. I got another game called Dating Prep. It's for every stage of relationship, whether single, engaged, dating, or married. Questions that you ask in three levels of life. Cement means, I mean, uh, cloud means cloud nine. You in love, you just met the person. Cement is when things are getting serious. And corporation is when you're about to build a company together. We call marriage, love, and beyond. So that's a uh, dating prep. You can also get the purpose of freedom now on Amazon and my book, Dating Prep. I don't have it with me today. It's in the mail on its way to me. This book is on soul ties and strongholds. It will teach you how to uh, see the source of the stronghold and the soul tie, to look at, to find the symptoms of it, and to help you find the solutions so that you can be successful. The books are on Amazon. All these resources are at ezegames.com, E-Z-E games.com. You can get uh, Memory Muscle, Dating Prep, or The Purpose of Freedom, and my uh, fifth book, Dating Prep. I love you guys. Be blessed. If you're watching this online, you want to give to Unplug, my nonprofit, and Propel. Unplug is for adult coaching. Propel is for youth mentoring. If you want to give, you can give online to IamUnplugged.com. If you want coaching sessions like this message was birthed out of, you can uh, 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 schedule a coaching session with me at MyCoachJosh.com. I love you guys. Be blessed.